Okay, so let's now look at chapter seven, which covers reactions, reactivity, and net ionic equations. So let's start chapter seven with a refresher. Let's start with a refresher. So first and foremost, let's talk about ionic compounds and aqueous solutions, just to set the stage. Soluble ionic compounds and strong acids dissociate to give their component ions in solution. So for example, sodium sulfide dissociates to sodium and sulfide, and the number of ions generated are based on the subscripts. Okay, so soluble ionic compounds and strong acids can best be thought of as mainly ions in solution. Now, compounds dissolved in water are denoted by the aqueous symbol. So another way to think about this is soluble ionic compounds, covalent compounds, and acids are denoted by the aqueous symbol. So the aqueous symbol is specifically referring to a solution of a compound in water. Now, one, one really important rule that I can't emphasize enough is that do not dissociate covalent compounds or polyatomic ions into their component atoms. So for example, if we have sodium nitrate, sodium nitrate in solution will break down into its component ions of sodium plus and nitrate, NO3 minus. We will not see sodium nitrate, sodium nitrate does not, does not break down into sodium, nitrogen, and oxygen. No, only break your COVID, only break down your ionic compounds into their component ions. Do not dissociate polyatomic ions into their component atoms. Polyatomic ions are a set of atoms chemically bonded together with a net charge. By the same token, by the same token, if you have, for example, a covalent compound, the last thing that I want to see is you breaking down this covalent compound into atoms. So these two things do not, do not do them. Do not dissociate polyatomic ions into their atoms do not dissociate covalent compounds into their atoms. Does that make sense? Only dissociate soluble ionic compounds and strong acids into their component ions. Okay, so with that established, insoluble compounds are denoted by a solid, liquid, or gas symbol. Insoluble compounds do not dissociate in aqueous solution. For example, lead chloride solid is insoluble. It exists and does not dissolve in water. So you'd see this layer of solid at the bottom of your flask if you had lead chloride in water. The lead chloride is an insoluble solid known as a precipitate. A precipitate is formally defined as a solid form from a chemical reaction, and a precipitate is an insoluble ionic compound in most cases. Precipitates are indicated with a solid symbol. Likewise, immiscible, not mixable, compounds are denoted by a liquid symbol. For example, hexanes and water are immiscible liquids and do not mix. So we'd have a clear phase boundary where we can clearly tell the hexanes apart from the water. So these two liquids are immiscible. So we write hexanes with the liquid symbol. So we write the C6H14 liquid. It's an immiscible liquid. Most gases are insoluble in aqueous solution. So for example, we denote that with a gaseous symbol. 
So for example, if we have a solution of water, we'd be able to clearly observe the bubbles of oxygen gas. So oxygen gas is relatively insoluble in water. Immiscible, yes, the oil and water analogy is perfect for this idea of immiscible. We have two substances that are liquids that do not mix to form a homogeneous solution. So oil and water is a perfect example of that. So with regards to pure elements, most pure elements are insoluble in aqueous solutions. So you just write the state symbol for that element at room temperature. So for example, a carbon solid, so if you have a container of water, carbon solid, it's like a lump of coal. So carbon solid does not dissolve in water. Likewise, if I tried to get a, a brick or a little piece of iron solid, Likewise, iron solid does not dissolve in water. This is a review from our previous chapter on chemical reactions. Any questions on assigning state symbols and the definitions for each of these state symbols? If not, let's continue on and let's discuss the solubility rules. So these are the rules that determine whether an ionic compound is soluble or insoluble. So let's look at these rules piece by piece. And first let's draw a little dividing line right here. So first and foremost, Soluble means we assign the aqueous symbol. Okay, that means the ionic compound will dissociate into its component ions in solution. So the soluble ionic compounds are any ion, ionic compound containing a group 1A ion. What are some examples of group 1A ions? What are some examples of group 1A ions? What's a group 1A element? Let's list a few of them. What are some examples of group 1A? Potassium, yep. What else? Sodium, yep. Lithium, okay. So if it has any group 1A cation, then the ionic compound will be soluble. If it has any ammonium cation, it will be soluble. If it has an acetate anion, it is soluble. If it has a nitrate ion, it is soluble. Chloride, bromide, and iodide ion containing compounds are soluble except and for these exceptions, for these exceptions, these would be insoluble and they would get the solid symbol. So if it has silver, lead, or mercury, and it has an iodide anion, it is insoluble. Likewise, most sulfate salts are soluble, except for calcium, strontium, barium, and lead sulfates. Does this table, is reading this table, does that make sense to everyone, how to read this table so far? Now, for these next three, by default, if it has any of these anions, if your ionic compound has any of these anions, it will be insoluble, except in these cases indicated here, in which case 
your compound will be soluble and will have an aqueous symbol. So carbonates, phosphates, and chromate salts are generally insoluble unless they have a group 1A or an ammonium cation. Sulfide salts are insoluble except for group 1A, group 2A, and ammonium sulfides. Finally, hydroxide salts are insoluble except for group 1A, calcium, barium, and strontium hydroxide salts, which would get a soluble symbol. Is everyone comfortable with reading this solubility table? I would recommend and that you become familiar with this table as we practice these examples, as you'll need to be able to quickly identify whether an ionic compound is soluble or insoluble. Okay, let's put this into practice. Let's put this into practice. Things are best learned via practice. So first and foremost, we're supposed to write the state symbol. So sodium sulfide. So look, going to the sulfide section of our chart. So if we go to the sulfide section of our chart, sulfides are generally insoluble except if we have a group 1A cation. Sodium is a group 1A, so we write sodium sulfide as Na2S aqueous. And sodium sulfide will break down to sodium plus and S2 minus. Okay, let's look at another example. Let's look at another example. And let's look at barium sulfate. So barium sulfate. So if I go to the sulfates, most sulfates are soluble except calcium, strontium, and barium. Since we see barium as our exceptions, barium sulfate would be written with a solid symbol. And barium sulfate does not dissociate. One more example, so aluminum hydroxide. So aluminum hydroxide, most hydroxides are insoluble. Aluminum is not an exception. So aluminum hydroxide is insoluble and it does not dissociate. Do these examples make sense so far? Everyone comfortable with this idea so far? So let's try individually to work on the following problem. So in this case, we're asked to write the state symbol for the following compounds, indicate the number of each ion produced if the compound dissolves, and indicate the major chemical species in the solution. So let's take a moment, let's look at these three, uh, sorry, these four examples. Let's assign the state symbols for each of these compounds and then indicate the ions present in solution. And don't be shy to submit your responses in the chat. So I'd like to see in the chat the formula and the state symbol or the formula and the ions present in solution. So we'll discuss this example in about three to four minutes. Uh, these examples are not quite yet up on Canvas. They'll be up tonight for you to, to practice as a follow-up. So for now, I'd like you to submit your responses in the chat and we'll go over these examples in the notes in about three to four minutes. And don't be shy to have the notes out with your solubility table as that's invaluable to solving these problems. 
but don't be shy to submit your proposed responses in the chat or unmute and share your responses or questions verbally. And we'll discuss this example in about another two to three minutes. Let's try to receive, let's try to get a few responses in the chat before we discuss. And the state symbol assignments that I'm seeing so far via, via the chat look perfect. And we'll discuss momentarily. Let's try to get a few more state symbol assignments in the chat and then we'll discuss. Spend about another one to two minutes on this example. And the state symbol assignments that I see so far in the chat look quite good. So let's discuss. So sodium nitrate, so sodium and nitrate salts are both soluble. So we'll assign the aqueous symbol. So then sodium nitrate in solution will break down into sodium plus aqueous and NO3 minus aqueous. Aluminum chloride, so looking at our table for the chloride salts, they are soluble and aluminum is not on the list of exceptions. So we write it with the aqueous symbol and aluminum chloride will break down into aluminum three plus aqueous and three Cl minus aqueous. Okay. Looking at calcium phosphate, let's get some responses in the chat. What state symbol should we assign to calcium phosphate? What state symbol should we assign to calcium phosphate? Solid, yep. So let's talk about why that is. So looking at our phosphate salts, Phosphate salts are generally insoluble and calcium is not an exception. So calcium phosphate is insoluble, so it does not dissociate. Potassium acetate, what state symbol should we put for potassium acetate? Soluble or insoluble? What state symbol should we put for potassium acetate? Aqueous or solid? What state symbol should we put? And let's try to get a few responses in the chat. What would we expect for potassium acetate? Aqueous, yep, yeah, exactly right. So looking at why that is, so looking at our solubility rules, group 1A and acetate salts are both soluble and we don't see any exceptions. So we'd assign the aqueous symbol. Potassium acetate breaks down into potassium plus and acetate ions 
in solution. Does this example make sense so far to everyone? Any questions on this example? Okay, so let's keep going now and let's do another batch and let's assign the state symbol to the following three compounds. So let's look at our solubility rules and let's assign the state symbol for the following three compounds. And we'll discuss this example in about two to three minutes. And in the meantime, don't be shy to, to submit your proposed state symbol assignments via Canvas. Oh, sorry, not via, or via the chat. And we'll discuss this example in about two to three minutes. And don't be shy to permit to submit your proposed state symbol assignments via the chat. And we'll discuss in about another minute to a minute and a half. And the state symbol assignments I see in the chat look great so far. And we'll discuss this example momentarily. Okay, so let's discuss. So cobalt sulfide or cobalt 2 sulfide, looking at our solubility table, sulfide salts are insoluble. So we assign this with a solid symbol and it does not dissociate. Lead iodide, would someone like to propose in the chat? What is the state symbol for lead iodide? Is it soluble or insoluble? Insoluble. Insoluble, exactly right. So we'd assign the solid symbol. Looking at our table, iodide salts are generally soluble except silver, lead, or mercury. As a result, lead iodide is insoluble and it does not dissociate. Finally, would someone like to provide the state symbol for silver chloride? Is it soluble or insoluble? Insoluble. Insoluble, yep, exactly right. So it does not dissociate. Okay, you're gonna wanna practice assigning the state symbols for ionic compounds and making sure you can easily identify soluble versus insoluble ionic compounds. Hey, Professor? Yes. Mm -hmm. I was wondering if we had to have this um, chart memorized. Yes, you'll have to be familiar with the solubility rules 
uh, in order to complete and write out Nereant equations in this chapter. Mm -hmm. And you'll slowly pick up a lot of these solubility rules as we write out multiple nanionic equations. So these are rules that rather than, I, I like to think of it as rather than just focus on explicitly memorizing like with flashcards, you just practice examples that require you to assign state symbols and eventually you'll pick up a lot of the very common solubility rules. And we'll see that as we work through examples in this chapter. So although it may look daunting, you'll notice a lot of patterns once we actually start solving problems. So let's elaborate on this idea. And we've talked about ionic compounds in aqueous solutions. Now let's talk about acids and bases in aqueous solution. So acids and bases are covalent compounds that are typically soluble in water. So an example of this would be acetic acid, CH3CO2H. It is soluble in water, it has the aqueous symbol. And the key feature of an acid is that they're an H plus or proton donor. So another way to think about acids um, is that acids in solution will dissociate to give H plus and their conjugate base, which is an anion written as A minus. So acids break apart into protons and their conjugate base. So for example, hydrochloric acid breaks up into a proton and the conjugate base of chloride. By the same token, if we look at sulfuric acid, what will sulfuric acid break down into? How many protons do we get from sulfuric acid? How many protons, how many H pluses are in sulfuric acid? Two, so it breaks down into two protons and the anion of sulfate, which is SO4 two minus. Okay, so we understand what an acid is. It's a proton donor, it makes H plus in solution. A base can be thought of as, an, as a proton acceptor. Another way to think about bases is that they either react with water to give hydroxide That's one mode that bases can function. One moment. Allow me one moment to, oh, never mind. Sorry about that. There was a small uh, delay in OneNote. So one mode that bases can react is that they can react with water to generate hydroxide in solution. So when you think of bases, I want you to think hydroxide. Another way that you can think of bases is that they dissociate to generate hydroxide in solution. So for example, sodium hydroxide breaks down to yield hydroxide and sodium. Another example of this phenomena is Strontium hydroxide. How many hydroxides are generated from strontium hydroxide? So strontium hydroxide is a soluble hydroxide salt. And how many hydroxides are generated from strontium hydroxide? Just looking at its chemical formula. How many hydroxide ions do we get from strontium hydroxide? We get two of them. So we have two OH minus and strontium two plus. Okay, so now let's talk a little bit about what makes a base strong or weak. So strong bases, so strong bases are soluble ionic salts 
containing hydroxide. So you're gonna to need to recall your solubility rules. Strong bases will dissociate completely in solution to give hydroxide. And the main thing that I want you to remember is that there are mainly ions in solution. So one example of a strong base, an example of a soluble hydroxide salt would be lithium hydroxide, which breaks down almost entirely to give lithium plus and OH minus aqueous. Would someone like to propose using our solubility rules, what's an example of another soluble hydroxide salt? What's another example of a soluble hydroxide salt? Oh uh, yeah, we have we have a uh, lithium hydroxide. I see calcium hydroxide. Let's check. Let's check our table. Yeah, uh, calcium hydroxide is reasonable. CaOH2 aqueous and calcium hydroxide breaks down into calcium two plus and two OH minus aqueous, yep. Another example would be sodium hydroxide where sodium hydroxide breaks down into sodium plus aqueous and OH minus aqueous. And the main thing that I want to impress on all of you in this section is that I want you, when you think about, for example, a solution of let's say lithium hydroxide aqueous. If we think about a picture of a solution of lithium hydroxide, we'd have our lithium plus ions and we'd have almost entirely, almost 100% ions in solution. We wouldn't have any ionic compound floating around as whole molecules. We'd have just ions present in solution. So when you think about and you're picturing what is actually in solution when we dissolve lithium hydroxide, we'd have only ions present in solution. That's gonna be important later on. Now, weak bases are compounds containing NHX, which we call amine functional groups. These are the majority of weak bases that you'll see. And weak bases dissociate less than 1% in solution. And the key feature for weak bases is that they're mainly dissolved molecular compound in solution. So one example of a weak base would be methylamine, which is CH3NH2 aqueous. And in solution, it reacts with water to generate a very small amount of the methyl ammonium salt and hydroxide. So this occurs less than 1% of all amine molecules. So the majority, the major species in solution is our molecular species. We have just a very, very small amount of ions in solution. Another very textbook weak base would be ammonia, which reacts with water in order to generate ammonium plus and hydroxide. So if you ever hear someone say ammonium hydroxide, that's just another way of saying ammonia in water. Okay, so now that we have this all set up, 
let's draw a picture of what weak bases look like in solution. So let's suppose we're looking at a picture of ammonia in solution. So following the, the guidelines we set out for weak bases, following our definition of weak bases, should I draw mainly ammonia molecules or hydroxide ions? What is the major species in solution? Ions or molecules? What, are, what is the major species in solution? Ions or molecules? For weak bases, what's the major species in solution? Molecules, okay. So I'm gonna draw mainly ammonia molecules. And then a really, really small percentage of all of our molecules are going to exist as ionic species. So we have a really small amount of ammonium ions and hydroxide ions. And the key feature, there are less than 1% ionization. So in solution, we have mainly molecules in solution. It's always important to draw pictures. What is actually going on at a atomic or molecular level in solution? What are the major species? And that in turn influences how we describe chemical reactions in solution. Does that make sense so far to everyone? Does this make sense to everyone so far? Okay, let's keep going now and let's talk about strong acids. So strong acids are this list of nitric, perchloric, sulfuric, hydrochloric, hydrobromic, and hydroiodic. So these are the ones that I want you to memorize as your strong acids. And the key thing about strong acids is that they dissociate completely in solution to give H plus a proton and their conjugate base. The main thing I want you to remember for strong acids, just like strong bases, they have mainly ions in solution. So for example, if we think about perchloric acid, not a common acid that you handle in the laboratory because it can make explosive mixtures, it will dissociate to give H plus and the conjugate base A minus which is ClO4 minus or perchlorate. So we have almost 100% ions in solution. So if I draw a picture, if I draw a picture of a solution of perchloric acid in water, should I draw mainly perchloric acid molecules or perchlorate ions? What is the major species in solution? What is the major species in solution? Ions or molecules? For a strong acid, what's the major species in solution? Ions or molecules? Ions. So I'll draw mainly protons, which are H plus, and perchlorate anions. So, whoops, I need one more perchlorate anion, so that way we have a correct dissociation equation. And then again, the main thing I want to emphasize for strong acids, just like strong bases, we have almost 100% ions in solution. Okay, so looking at weak acids, so weak acids are any acid that's not listed as a strong acid. 
Weak acids dissociate less than 1% in solution. So as a result, we have mainly molecular compound in solution. We have a little bit of ions, not a, not a lot, but a little bit. What would an example of a weak acid be? Let's get a response in the chat. What was an example of a weak acid? What is an example of a weak acid? Don't be shy to type it in the chat. Sure, carbonic acid, sure. Another example of a weak acid would be acetic acid. So acetic acid, it's soluble in water, but just like a weak base, it dissociates less than 1% to give ions in solution. So we don't really see a large amount of acetate anions or protons in solution. So if we were to draw a picture of acetic acid in solution, so CH3CO2H, should I draw mainly ions or mainly molecules? For acetic acid in solution, should I draw mainly ions or molecules? Just like before, it's a weak acid, so we'll draw mainly molecules. So then let's draw some acetic acid molecules. And we have a small amount, less than 1% ionization. So let's draw our small number of ions in solution. And again, the one thing I want to emphasize is that there is mainly molecules in solution for your weak acids. There is less than 1% ionization. So to help you be familiar with your strong acids, strong bases, weak acids, and weak bases, I have compiled a table of common strong acids and strong bases, if that's easier for you to remember. Uh, yes, carbonic acid is soluble in water. Yep, it is. Mm -hmm. Yep, there's no issues with carbonic acid. It's just a... Um, it's a little trickier to draw in solution nicely. Okay. So if there aren't any questions moving forward with this idea of strong acids, strong bases, weak acids, and weak bases. So acids follow different rules than just looking at the solubility table. The solubility table is for ionic compounds. Acids are soluble covalent compounds that break down into an ionize in solution. So you can't use the solubility table for acids. In general, all acids that you'll see in this class are soluble in water. Okay, so now we're gonna tie this idea of soluble ionic compounds and soluble and strong and weak acids together into this idea called electrolytes. So ions dissolved in solution conduct electricity. So for example, 
if you have a cell and you hook up a light bulb to it. If your solution contains a salt, then the solution conducts electricity and your light bulb will light up. So this is a classic test that is done to determine strong, weak, and non-electrolytes. You have a cell, you place the cell into your solution, and if the solution conducts electricity, then your light bulb lights up. This is also the reason why if you're ever working with electrical equipment around salt water, you have to be especially careful because salt water is a great conductor of electricity. Solutions containing soluble ionic compounds, strong acids or strong bases conduct electricity. Now, we have this catch-all term to describe species that ionize readily in solution. We call them strong electrolytes. So strong electrolytes dissolve and then completely dissociate to give ions in solution. We have only ions in solution. Strong electrolytes are your strong acids, strong bases, and soluble ionic compounds. So if it's any of these categories, it's a strong electrolyte. So to give you an example, if we look at sodium chloride, sodium chloride is a soluble ionic compound. So what do we see in solution? What do we see in solution? Do we see ions or molecules? Do we see ions or molecules? It's a soluble ionic compound. And what do we see? We see 100% ions, okay? Now let's, let's, let's draw as another list. Let's draw as another picture. Let's draw as another picture an example of a, let's do an example of a strong base. What is an example of a strong base that we want to draw a picture of? What is an example of a strong base? KOH, sure. Potassium hydroxide is a strong base, okay. So we'd expect to see mainly ions in solution. So I'm gonna draw all of my potassium pluses. Notice, I'm being very careful to draw out a number of cation and anion based on my chemical formula. So just don't, don't be sloppy when looking at pictures of ions in solutions and just make sure you're respecting the chemical formula. Does everyone see how the ratio of potassium to hydroxide is one to one? Let's do one more example and this one will be a bit a bit interesting. This one will be a bit interesting. Let's look at H2SO4 which is our strong acid. Let's look at a picture of H2SO4. Do I, do I see mainly ions or mainly molecules for sulfuric acid? Mainly ions or mainly molecules? Ions, okay. So I'm gonna draw out a few protons. I'm gonna draw out one, two, three, four, five, six protons. And now just to make sure everyone is paying attention, just to make sure everyone's paying attention, how many sulfates should I draw? How many sulfate ions do I need to draw in order for this to be an accurate depiction? of sulfuric acid in solution. How many total sulfates do I need to draw? If I have six H pluses, I need to draw three sulfates. Exactly right. 
Does everyone see why I need to draw three sulfates? Because it's a, it's a two to one ratio. We have two protons per every one sulfate. Let's write that out in equation form so that way everyone can see what's going on. So sodium chloride breaks down into sodium plus and Cl minus aqueous. KOH aqueous breaks down into potassium plus and OH minus aqueous. And sulfuric acid one moment. And sulfuric acid breaks down into two H plus and SO4 two minus. Does this idea make sense to everyone? Does this idea of strong electrolytes make sense to everyone? We have 100% ions in solution. Does this make sense to everyone so far? Is everyone comfortable with this idea? Okay, so let's look at the next class of electrolytes. So the other type of electrolytes that we commonly see are known as weak electrolytes. So weak electrolytes, they dissolve and they partially dissociate less than 1% in solution. So we have mainly molecular compound and a small amount of dissolved ions. Weak electrolytes are typically weak acids, weak bases, and slightly soluble ionic compounds. So weak is weak. Weak acids and bases are weak electrolytes. So let's look at an example. In this case, we have acetic acid, which is a weak acid. And as we notice, do we see mainly ions or molecules in solution? Do we see mainly ions or molecules? Yep, we have mainly molecules and then we have less than 1% ionization. But there's still a very small number of ions. So these solutions do still conduct electricity. Okay, so let, let's give an example of a weak base. Let's give an example of a weak base. We won't talk about slightly soluble ionic compounds. That's more of a general chemistry two discussion. What would an example of a weak base be? What would an example of your stereotypical weak base be? What's an example of a weak base? Ammonia, yep, that's your, that's your placeholder weak base. We're gonna draw mainly ammonia molecules in solution. And we have a little bit of excitement here in that we have a small number of ions in solution. In this case, a small number, oops, one moment. In this case, a small number, whoops, let me switch the pen really quickly. We have a small number of ammonium cation and hydroxide anion. So the key feature for weak electrolytes, there's a little bit of ionization, but we have mainly molecules in solution. Does this idea make sense to everyone so far? Does this make sense to everyone so far? This idea of strong and weak electrolytes? Any questions so far? Okay, let's now discuss the next two examples.
the next two classes of compounds. So non-electrolytes, they're pretty boring. They dissolve, but they do not dissociate to produce ions. We have only molecular compounds in solution, no ions. I can't emphasize this enough. Non-electrolytes are typically soluble polar covalent compounds that contain an OH, N, or an, an OH functional group, an NR functional group, a CO functional group, or SH functional groups. So these are signposts that you should look for when you think about polar compounds, as we discussed in previous chapters. So for example, looking at the following molecule, in this case, sucrose. So it has the OH functionality, and, it, and we know sugar dissolves in water. So looking at this solution, do we have mainly ions or molecules in solution? What do we see in solution? Do we see any ions at all, in fact? all molecules. We have 100% dissolved molecules. And again, no ions. So what's another example? Would someone like to give another example of a soluble covalent compound? Would someone like to give another example of a non-electrolyte. There's something that's often cons probably consumed by many people. What's an uh, glucose? Sure, that's a, that's a good one. So one example would be glucose. Um, that's a great example of a of a of a non-electrolyte. Another example that that immediately sprang to mind is this following molecule here known as ethanol, which is the principal component of many alcoholic beverages. Not to be confused with methanol, you don't wanna drink methanol or you'll go blind, but ethanol is the one that you can drink. And in solution, we'd have primarily and entirely molecules in solution. Oops. So I like remembering ethanol because it helps me remember alcohols are soluble and most alcohols are non-electrolytes. So it has a twofold mnemonic to help you out. Does this idea of non-electrolytes make sense to everyone so far? Okay, now there's one other category, and this is mostly me being very, very picky. Uh, I call this Na, and quite simply, this just says the compound does not dissolve in aqueous solution. So nothing is dissolved in solution. So Na, or not available, is used to designate insoluble or immiscible compounds and insoluble ionic compounds. So examples of this would include, for example, if you have benzene, C6H6, in water. Benzene is an immiscible liquid. So we'd see as a clear dividing line, we'd be able to see our benzene, which is C6H6. And water, and these are immiscible liquids. So there's nothing even dissolved in water. So there's no C6H6 dissolved. So it wouldn't really be appropriate to call it a non-electrolyte. It's not even dissolved. It doesn't, there's no reason to call it non-electrolyte because non-electrolytes have to actually be soluble in water. Okay, another example would be insoluble ionic compounds. So would someone like to give an example of an insoluble ionic compound? What's an example of an insoluble 
ionic compound. And there are a lot of them, so you can really take your pick, whichever one strikes your, strikes your fancy, whichever one you're, you particularly want to list. What would an example of an insoluble ionic compound? What's an example of an insoluble ionic compound? Sure, calcium carbonate. If we were given, if we were, if we were giving in-person lectures with a chalkboard, that would be such a perfect example because calcium carbonate is a principal component of chalk. Anyway, as we clearly see, calcium carbonate does not even dissolve in water. So there's nothing in solution. It's all sitting as an insoluble precipitate at least from our general chemistry one perspective. Does this, do these assignments make sense to everyone? Does everyone understand the idea of a strong, weak, and non-electrolyte? So, things are best learned and integrated via application. So let's do a guided example where we have to predict if the following compounds are strong, weak, or non-electrolytes, or none of the above, and indicate the major chemical species in solution. Okay, so I'll start us off. Methanol, the one that you should not drink. CH3OH, this OH indicates that we likely have a soluble covalent compound. So this gets an aqueous symbol. And since it's not an ionic compound, and it's not a strong acid, and it's not a weak acid, we would call this a non-electrolyte. And for non-electrolytes, we have only molecules in solution. Sodium nitrate, what is that? Sodium nitrate, is that an ionic, covalent, what is it? Sodium nitrate, is it ionic, covalent, what is it? Ionic, and is it soluble or insoluble? Sodium salts, sodium nitrate, is that soluble or insoluble? Sodium salts are soluble. Yep, so this is a soluble ionic compound. So it gets the aqueous symbol. Ergo, we have a strong electrolyte. And this sodium nitrate is going to break down in solution to sodium plus NO3 minus. And we have only or almost entirely ions in solution. Okay, let's look at the next example. So copper sulfide. So what is copper sulfide? Is it ionic, covalent? What is it? Copper sulfide, it's ionic. And now my question is, is it soluble or insoluble? Is copper sulfide soluble or insoluble? It's insoluble. So it's an insoluble ionic compound. It gets a solid. So it's Na. There is no dissolved species in solution. It's just an insoluble precipitate. OK, let's do another one. Ammonia. What type of species is, it, is ammonia? Is it ionic compound? Is it an acid? Is it a covalent compound? What, what, what's the best way to describe ammonia? It's a covalent compound. And what type of covalent compound? Is it an acid? Is it a base? What is it? It's a weak base. OK, perfect. So ammonia is a weak base, so it gets the aqueous symbol. And we're going to draw some arrows here just to show that we have 
a little bit of ionization, but we know weak bases are a weak electrolyte with mainly molecules in solution and less than 1% ionization. Does this make sense to everyone so far? Let's keep going. Potassium hydrogen sulfate, in other words, KHSO4. What type of compound is KHSO4? Is it ionic, covalent? What is potassium hydrogen sulfate? Is it ionic, covalent, acid, base? What is it? It's an ionic compound, yep. So it's a salt, and is it soluble or insoluble? So it's an ionic compound. Is it soluble or insoluble? Is potassium hydrogen sulfate soluble or insoluble? I see in the chat that it's mentioned that it's a soluble ionic compound. Key giveaway, potassium salts are almost always soluble. That gives us an aqueous symbol, and we have potassium plus an HSO4, or hydrogen sulfate anion, in solution. And we have only ions in solution. So this compound is a strong electrolyte. Let's do one last example. So C5H10. What type of compound is this? What is C5H10? Is it ionic, covalent? What is it? It's covalent. Okay. And is it miscible or immiscible with water? It, it's a hydrocarbon. So does that dissolve in water? It's not soluble in water, exactly right. So it's an immiscible compound. So we write it as C5H10 with a liquid symbol. And we designate it with the Na symbol because there is no dissolved species in solution. Does this make sense to everyone so far? It's a liquid, so in general, most of the hydrocarbons that you see are gonna be liquids or gases. Um, it's very rare for, at least unless it's a very, very high molecular weight molecule for the hydrocarbon to be a solid. Most of the examples I'll provide for hydrocarbons, I'll explicitly tell you if it's a solid or a liquid. We don't yet have the tools to predict that um, from the rules that we have. The main point that I'm trying to get you to take away from this is that hydrocarbons are not soluble in water. So as a result, just like insoluble ionic compounds, there's nothing in solution. There's nothing dissolved in, in, in solution. Okay, so Let's take a look and let's work on the following example. And don't be shy to submit your responses in the chat. I'd like you to tell me whether each of the compounds are strong, weak, or non-electrolytes. And then I'd like you to identify the major species, whether it's an ion, molecule, or whether nothing is present in solution. So let's work on the following six examples, and then we'll come together to discuss in about six minutes. And don't be shy to message me or propose responses in the chat.
or to unmute and communicate your responses or questions verbally. So we'll discuss in about five to six minutes. And don't be shy to submit your proposed responses in the chat and we'll discuss in about another four to five minutes. And the responses I see in the chat so far look good. Let's try to get a few more responses for the state symbol assignments for each of these compounds and the major chemical species in solution for each of these compounds. And we'll discuss in about another three minutes. And just remember, if it's insoluble, is anything actually dissolved in solution? Insoluble and immiscible compounds, there's nothing dissolved in solution. And the responses I see in the chat look good so far. And the responses I see in the chat so far look pretty great so far. Let's try to get a few more responses in the chat and we'll discuss in about another two to three minutes. Let's try to get a few more responses in the chat. And if there are any questions on how to assign any of these state symbols, don't be shy to ask them in the chat as a public or private message. And we'll discuss this 
problem solving session in about another minute. Okay, so let's discuss this example. So first and foremost, barium sulfate. What type of species is barium sulfate? Is it ionic or covalent? It's ionic, okay. Is it soluble or insoluble? It's a, is it a soluble or insoluble ionic compound? Soluble or insoluble? It's insoluble, exactly right. Sulfate salts of barium are insoluble, so we'd get a solid symbol. So we write this as Na. We have no dissolved species in solution. Barium sulfate is just an insoluble precipitate. Let's look at C6H6. Is that soluble or insoluble in water? Are hydrocarbons soluble or insoluble in water? Are hydrocarbons soluble or insoluble? Insoluble, exactly right. So hydrocarbons are typically insoluble in water. So we'd again list it as Na. It's an immiscible liquid. There is no species dissolved in solution. Does this make sense to everyone so far? Let's look at this next compound, perchloric acid. What, what type of compound is it? And this is where your nomenclature helps you out. If you know the name of this compound as perchloric acid, what type of compound is it? It's an acid and it's a strong acid specifically. So it's a strong acid, so it gets the aqueous symbol. And what do strong acids do in solution? For strong acids, do we have Ions or molecules in solution? Do we have ions or molecules? We have 100% ions. So we have H plus aqueous, we have ClO4 minus aqueous, and we have 100% ions in solution. So we call this a strong electrolyte. Okay, let's keep going. Looking at copper two nitrate. What type of compound is copper two nitrate? It's ionic, yep. And is it soluble or insoluble? Is it soluble or insoluble? Soluble, yep, so this is a soluble ionic compound, so it breaks down into copper 2 plus aqueous and NO3 minus aqueous. So it's a soluble ionic compound. We have 100% ions in solution. So what would we call this? A strong, weak, or non-electrolyte? Is copper nitrate a strong, weak, or non-electrolyte? What is it? It's a strong electrolyte. Perfect. Okay, let's do a few more. Potassium acetate. Potassium acetate, which is of the formula K, CH3, CO2. What type of compound is potassium acetate? 
Is it soluble or insoluble? Potassium acetate. It's soluble, yep. It's a soluble ionic compound. So it would get an aqueous symbol and this soluble ionic compound will break down into its component ions in solution. So then as we have 100% ions in solution, we'd call potassium acetate a strong electrolyte. Okay, let's do one more. So let's look at the following compound methane thiol uh, what are you saying is oh, even though it's a weak acid it can be a strong electrolyte what are you referring to so acetic acid is a weak acid but an acetate salt is an entirely different species does that answer your question you are correct in that acetic acid is a weak acid and a weak electrolyte, but this is potassium acetate. It's a soluble ionic compound. And those soluble ionic compounds can completely dissociate into their component ions. Perfect. So let's do one more example, methane thiol. So is this compound soluble or insoluble? And what type of compound is it? Uh, it's not quite a hydrocarbon. As, uh, I'll highlight this SH group. And I'd like you to think for a little bit and tell me, is it soluble or insoluble? It's a covalent compound. Okay, yep, you're correct in that. And is it soluble or insoluble? So that the SH group is a signpost that it's a soluble covalent compound. So it would get the aqueous symbol but as it's a soluble covalent compound, do we have mainly ions or molecules in solution? Do we see mainly ions or molecules in solution? We have mainly, and by mainly I mean almost functionally 100% molecules in solution. So then would we call this a strong, weak, or non-electrolyte? Would we call this a strong, weak, or non-electrolyte? So it would be a non-electrolyte. because there are no ions generated in solution. So just to explain SH, or this polar functionality can interact with water and it makes this compound soluble. We'll talk more about the reasoning behind these solubility rules for these different functional groups in later chapters. Essentially, these are polar functional groups that can interact with water and allow your compound to dissolve in water. This compound itself, as it's a soluble covalent compound that is neither an acid nor a base, it's not ionizing in solution. We have mainly molecules in solution, so we call it a non-electrolyte. It's in solution, but there are no ions in solution. Does that make sense to everyone? Is everyone comfortable with strong, weak, and non-electrolytes? So 
This is a good stopping point. I'd like you to review your solubility rules because we'll continue this lecture tomorrow in lecture and we'll discuss writing ionic and net ionic equations and handling redox reactions. So we'll pause our lecture for today.